All right, I'm gonna I guess in this video I'm gonna show you how to shim your valves on a 2009 to 2011 CRF 450. Uh, it's common across all machines. This is how you will do it. Just the specs are different. So I already have the fuel tank off. Uh, I removed the rear shock and the subframe to make it easier to access the intake valves, and I push the throttle body down and out of the way. So valve covers off. Uh, uh, timing plugs are off. So I'm able to crank the engine. I already have it at top dead center, with that hash mark there aligned with the uh, along with the sealing surface of the uh, the cam cap, whatever you want to call it. I can't think of it right now, but anyway. So after this, you know, you just take your good old fashioned feeler gauge, and you're going to go underneath your exhaust and your intake and get your clearance. So I kind of fucked up and decided to just ride my bike no matter what. So I have, uh, and this will be your clearances for this bike, 0.25 to 0.31 for the exhaust. And I'm in spec on the exhaust. I'm at, I'm at 0.28 right in the middle still. On the intake though, zero clearance at all. So I'm going to be spending some time here uh, doing some shim work. So first thing right off the bat, you know, and this will be something that you do, uh, say your bike is getting hard to, harder to start. Uh, taking m many more kicks than usual and you have to like bump start starter all the time is the most common uh, scenario I've seen that tells me that, you know, you need a shim valve. So, like I said, everything's off, everything's ready. Next, you have to take this little 8mm cap off of your chain tensioner bolt and then you can take a little screwdriver. I might have to, actually, you know what? I'm gonna have to move this guy out of the way by removing these two bolts. I need more room to get this in there. I'll be right back. All right, so I moved this guy out of the way. Not only was it those two bolts, but I had to take this one out too. I forgot it's all one piece. So you can take something like a pocket screwdriver now, go in between. This is kind of hard watching the video and doing this. Get in there, find that uh, flathead, and it's righty tidy. This is very hard with one hand. And then you're gonna reach a dead spot and then you're gonna have to put a lot of pressure on it to get it to stay. Which is going to be difficult for me because I'm only using one hand. Hang on. Say hello to my thigh. Okay, a lot of pressure and it'll stay. And all this does is take all the tension off your cam chain so you're able to actually you know, remove everything. All right, so next, the next step would be uh, to remove the cam. And that's just going to be removing these 10 millimeter bolts right here, these four, and you're gonna take your whole cam cap off. And I'll be right back when I do that. Uh, yeah, I'll be right back when I do that. All right, I got the bolts removed. You might have to wiggle this, rock this back and forth to get her broke loose, but when she comes off, Make sure you don't lose those C-clips like I just did. If they fall down in the engine, you're gonna have a bad time because you gotta get them out. This C-clip stayed on this side. That one is resting right there. Oh, so I'm gonna go set this down real quick. And now, I'm gonna get that one out of there and go set it down. Ooh, that could have been a bad day if that fell down on the engine side. You'd have to pull the Ignition cover off and fish it out with a magnet. It, most likely it's going to be stuck on your magneto though. Seen it before many times. So next we're going to have to get the cam off. Let me go set this C-clip down. I'm sorry. I have a project in the way of my personal project, but it needs to be ready for this weekend. So we're just going to slide I'm sorry, you can't see this. We're going to slide the bearing forward and be able to rock the cam down. And then you can pick the cam chain up and off. And I'm going to have to set you down because I don't want to lose the cam chain down in there. So all I'm going to do is after I get the chain off, move the cam up and out of the way and take a screwdriver and slide it through so the cam chain stays. 
So I'm covered in oil now. I'm sorry. Cam off. Cam chain staying in place. And then we're just going to take the cam and we're going to go set her down somewhere. Somewhere nice. It's a beautiful cam. Stock one. Can't wait to upgrade to the stage two. But yeah, this is where you're going to be checking your bearings. Make sure they still spin and move. They don't have any hang-ups. Make sure your decompression lever still works and what have you. And then set her off to the side. No grooves on the cam. Also check your cam chain for any kind of kinks. Um, or, you know, starting to bind up. Mine still felt pretty good, but we are getting close to a top end rebuild and it will be replaced. All right, so hang on one second. All right, so I always recommend doing them one at a time. And the way I set mine up is this is the exhaust. So this is the front of the bike. This is left, right, left, right on the intake. So we're gonna start with the far right one and get him out of there. And typically the shim will come with, I'm making risks here for you. Don't want it to fall in. There's the shim there. Now, with the shim and the shim bucket, oh, I need a different, I need a stand. With mine, you know, I run hot cams, and usually with the hot cams, you'll still be able to see the number. If the number, sorry, if you put it down on the valve, not on the bucket. So like that. And this one happens to be a 195. And since my clearance was at zero on this machine, what I'm going to do is, you know, I could still kick the bike over, but it was, you know, it took a lot. So I'm thinking I will just go from, and, this, and you know, one more thing real quick with these Hondas. Uh, if you don't have the titanium upgrade, they, the intake stretch so quickly, so much, and if they start stretching too much, too often, where you're like, uh, I just shimmed my bike a month or two ago, and it's already coming out of whack. You need to just tear it open and replace those valves before you snap the head off and have catastrophic engine failure. So what I'm going to do is, uh, since I, I'm probably not at zero, I'm probably a little under, but I'm going to take a risk here, and I'm going to go 0.2 millimeters under this 195. So to create gap, we're not going to go up in numbers. We're going to go down in numbers. So with no gap with a 195, and just, let's just say I'm at zero, <clears throat> if we throw a 175 in it, it should be 0.2 millimeters, right? That would be out of spec. And I'd have to take the cam off again and get to 0.15, wherever, you know, as close to that as in the middle as I can. I prefer to try and get as close to the edge. That way I don't have to shim as often. So hang on one second and I will start getting everything ready. Okay, so this is the other one. I already put uh, the new one in. And uh, I didn't mention this before, but if you cannot read the face of your shim, you're going to have to actually measure the gap of it, right? You can use a, a very near caliper, which is fairly accurate, but I recommend a micrometer. Oh, always a micrometer, it's very, very accurate, very on point. Just make sure you wipe all the oil off so you get an accurate reading. And if you end up in like middle numbers or something like that, just do the math and get as close as you can as possible. Well, my second one happened to be a 190. So we're going to put him back in our uh, 190, and we need a 170, a 170, right here, or 170, cha-cha. Sorry, I'm watching my hands and not the camera, so you're missing most of this stuff. I'm not a cameraman, I'm a, I'm a motorcycle person. So I'm going to go put this guy in, and when you put them in... Make sure they sit flush and flat. No lift up or anything like that because you will not get a good reading or anything, you know, and possible damage too. So I'm going to go put this guy in, 
put the bucket on top of them and set the cam on and get another feeler gauge reading and I will see you then. Okay, here we are back at uh, the you know, camshaft. Uh, I just put the camshaft on, I didn't put the chain on because I wasn't sure how close we'd be. I had no idea because we had no gap. Uh, tightened all of it down, I didn't even put the C-clips in to hold the, the bearings in place. I'm just checking gap to verify and this is why. So after my guess and throwing in, I have a .10 gap on the right hand one and a .20 on the left hand one. You're supposed to be in there. I would have done a lot of work if I would have just thrown it together and expected it to be good just to take it back apart. So now that we have that, we actually have our basis now. So we can throw on the other shims and, you know, I'll go up one on this one to, uh, or I'm sorry, down one on this one to increase gap and up one on this one to decrease gap. So yeah, now I get to take it back off, pull the shims out, see you in a second. All right, back here again at the cam, swapped out the shims, uh, went down one, went up one, I just, just swap shims because one was a 1.75, the other one was a 1.70, and I just swapped them around. Tightened the block or the cam holder back down. I still don't have the C clips in there. I'm just checking clearances. Just have to make sure that the cam moves freely, you know. Um, cam chain on on. After this adjustment. I am now finally within spec. Uh, 0.17 on the left hand side, 0.15 on the other. I feel confident with this. I'm gonna, you know, continue going together after that. And uh, another thing that I forgot to mention too when you have all this out, don't forget to check your cam lobes. Look for excessive wear rounding, uh, like the edges starting to mushroom out and stuff like that. That would mean you need to replace the cam. Um, other than that, that's uh, pretty much how you do uh, do your shims. I know I didn't go over shim math uh, very much. I just gave you a brief rundown. Hopefully you're, you have your repair manual to refer to. And if you were wondering, if you're watching the video on which bolts go where, the short ones are on this side. The long ones are on this side. Arrow always points towards exhaust. So, yeah, there you go. Dow pins will keep you lined up. Uh, I'll continue on with the video, but right now it's getting pretty cold. I'm going to call her a night, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, here we are next day. Uh, you know, shimmed correctly. I've already got the cam chain on and timed correctly. Uh, C-clips on. When you're uh, putting this on, make sure you push it all the way down flush. So, and if it doesn't go down flush, the C-clips are slightly off. I mean, you can look at the bottom of this and see how they're going to line up. And, uh, yeah, just make sure it goes down flush. If not, when you start tightening down, you can damage a lot of things if the C-clips are not in their guides. And, real quick, we're just going to re-verify timing. It's kind of hard to see. Before we go together, you just rock the cam up all the way because this side is not going to have slack this slide has the slack and when that tensioner goes in so we're lined up with our mark there and I know it's hard to see because I don't have a light but the timing mark is lined up there always keep re-verifying timing as you go together so right now I'm gonna tighten the cam cover back down and then I'll be back when I let the tension off of this, or put the tension back on this. All right, got the uh, cam cap tightened back down. Re-verified timing once again. Everything is lined up. I know that one's hard to see. I would shine a light in there, but it's just a small little line. Uh, I'll shine a light in there. Uh, I can't do both at once. Not that guy. I mean, it's reflecting right off of them, but yeah, there's a little line right there uh, to help you verify timing. And now we're going to release the uh, tensioner so it'll apply tension to, and it's just going to be lefty loosey, and it goes all the way in. And now we have all of our 
tension on our cam chain. There's no slack anymore. Very little play in it. And now that we have that done, to verify everything is good and rolling, we're not just going to throw her together and start kicking her over. We are going over to the other side, because we have to go over to the other side, to roll the engine. And we're just going to roll the engine in normal rotation, and we're going to spin it around a few times. We're going to go nice and slow, make sure your spark plug is out, makes it a lot easier on you. We're just going to make sure there is not going to be any... valve touching the piston. We'll go a few times. Gurgle, gurgle. Yeah, that's all good. I mean, I watched the exhaust valve open a few times and close. We're all good. We're ready to rock and roll. And that is it. You'll just go back together the same way you came apart. And that is how you shim your valves on your machine. Oh, always remember to re-verify timing multiple times. Don't forget that rotation at the very end. And yeah, it's uh, quite a process. I took apart the bike a little more than you necessarily need to. I only did it to get into the intake valves a little easier. And it's probably different for, you know, different brands. Yamaha's different. Uh, especially their five valve, you'll need a slimmer... Uh, Feeler gauge for the center valve, but other than that, they're all basically the same. Just make sure you get within your specs, which we did. Right on. Good job, guys. Shimmed your valves.